I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is a skilled two and a half inch roller hammer. Picked it up for two dollars at a garage sale. Had a few minor problems on it. A couple of loose bolts, some missing screws, and no drill bits. No bits at all. So, I went looking for drill bits and drill bits were prohibitively expensive. Fortunately, I found somebody with a stash of drill bits that they no longer needed and they were willing to sell them to me. So for $50 and $31 in shipping, I got 10 drill bits ranging from inch and a eighth on down to half inch. And that's going to handle all the drilling that I'm going to need to do for the rest of my life. I have the drill motor put together. I'll show you what I discovered on my way to here. Okay. There they go. And this pin would come up through here. Prior to the drill bit going in. It's just that if this is rounded, so it just rides in there, and this can't drive it, all I'm going to get is the pounding action. Okay, so we got some basic design parameters scoped out. The drill bits look to be in very good shape. Let's see. They've all got the carbide in them so far. Any of them broken? No. 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 Well, that's pretty good. They're all in good shape. They, they're all, they all appear to have been used, but they they weren't abused. They were used to cut whatever they were supposed to cut, and not broken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Considering that each one of these is going to run fifty bucks, eighty-one dollars is not a bad price. I went on eBay and ordered a set of drill bits for this skilled two and a half inch roto hammer. It's a model 731, and that makes a difference. 731 is not the same as all the rest of them. There are distinctive differences. Most of them take the same size drill bit, but not all of them. This drill and I have the nose piece off right now in the draw or in this picture. I have the nose piece off just so that you can see what it looks like. This hex goes into this hex driver, and that's what rotates the drill. This driver rotates as the when you pull the trigger, that socket in there spins and turns the drill bit. There's also 
a piston in there that fires a hammer up that hits the bottom of this. That's what I'm pushing against with the spring. It's designed to use either a drill bit or a chisel. Unfortunately, I'm not able to find a chisel for a reasonable amount of money. Might be a situation where it's just a reasonable amount of money no matter what it is. Because this Milwaukee is the correct hex. You need to have a three quarter inch hex in order to fit into the nose piece. This is an octagon. Won't go. Recutting a chisel to be a hex shape is prohibited. I can possibly turn this one down to work, you know, by doing some machining and forging on it to get it the way I need it. I don't know if it's worth the trouble. Catch on it. It's supposed to keep the drill bit in place. Heck, fire it does. It actually works. Okay. Having drill bits makes assumptions a lot easier to deal with. Let's reassemble this thing and see what happens. Grease seal. Goes around that section there. Somebody's had this off in the past. Looks like more than once. And they've lost the lock washers. So that would be a good thing to have. I'm excited now. I've got the opportunity to perhaps get this running without a great deal of effort. I was thinking I was going to have to make a whole lot of changes to it to get it to function. But now, seeing how things actually go together instead of working from drawings I have a great deal of hope that this drill will work it's needed maintenance and I've done some repairs to it that it sorely needed It doesn't look like it needs quite the major overhaul I originally expected it to. I am very happy. When I was opening up the package this morning and looking at everything, I was beginning to think, oh, I'm not going to get a chisel for this at all. And that might be true. I might not be able to buy a chisel with the budget that I have to work with. I want to bring all these up first before I tighten any of them. Because it looks like this doesn't sit entirely flat on there. For some reason, this might need a 
gasket in there. Once again, wouldn't a part washer be nice? So how do I get that on there? of applied force, I guess. There's 
like that. At least at this point, following the Schrodinger's cat theory, I have a functional skill two and a half inch roto hammer. And it's a model 731. Able to drill a two and a half inch hole. I don't have a bit big enough to make a two and a half inch hole. And I think that probably would be a core bit. But I think this one inch shouldn't be a problem. Oh, this is an inch and an eighth. It's a big honker. I actually have the size written down here at the bottom of the shank. That's a one inch. Inch and an eighth. Seven eighths. Five eighths. Five eighths. Looks like five eighths was a popular size. Nine sixteenths. This is another five eighths, a longer five eighths. Nine Half inch. Half inch. I'm set to knock holes in concrete, stone, and various other hard substances. Now, according to the manual, this drill will also handle drilling in steel. It's a high torque drill. <laughs> that handle socket there probably is a necessity. So before I try doing anything with this, I'm going to construct a handle. But since I have to go to the store, and that's why I have to stop, I can pick up a piece of pipe while I'm on my way to the store and make a handle for this thing. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. Now I gotta go get ready. I gotta go to the store and pick up balloons.